You can see there's definitely some rocks mixed in. It's a good fish over there, about 12 feet, 50 feet, 45 feet. Oh, there you bit. Oh, there the bobber goes down. There he is. Oh, you bet. You bet. Another beauty right there. We got some just quality fish. All right, welcome back. Uh, it's been a little bit of an interesting stretch since my last video I ran, that handful of trips that I was scouting for over the last few days here. And today I actually had a trip postponed uh, because some of the boat troubles I've been having. I uh, can't remember if I shared last video, but having some boat issues, uh, essentially it's just in safety mode so I can't get over a certain number of RPMs. So pretty much just putzing around the lake right now and most of my clients have been just fine with that. But today we have a little bit of time so I figured I'd get out and shoot a little video. Last week I also had some issues with my transducer. The day that I shot that last video, uh, you might notice that my picture wasn't super crisp on my screen. And so I was on the phone with Garmin and long story short, they need to replace my transducer. So it's been a little bit of an interesting adventure, um, but today we're gonna be out and I'm kind of do a similar thing where I'm just gonna run through a bunch of different patterns that I'm looking for. You know, right now we're kind of in that early summertime. Water temps are actually back down 70 degrees. So we spiked up to about 77. Uh, surface temps are back down to about 70 degrees here. So I'm gonna kind of take you along with me. I'm gonna show you and kind of talk through some of the structure that I'm finding some of these fish. Hopefully we can find some good groups of fish and we can put a few in the boat today. So stick around, we'll see what happens. Oh, that looks like a good fish over there, about 12 feet. They're about 10, 12 feet down, about 35 feet out. See it going down for it a little bit. Oh, there you bit. He's on it. You bet. Oh, there he's spit. Oh, there he is. Let's go. Good fish too. Drag's a little loose. You can see on the live scope there coming up. Good, everything's recording. Good start to the day right here. Oh, I think it's a good walleye. You can see it looked a little longer on the live scope. Oh, you bet, just a beauty. That is a heck of a start right here. Oh, come on, get in the net. Get in the net. This is what, oh boy. Oh boy, making me nervous. Jeez, this guy is just fired up. Love it. Oh, you bet. Oh, you bet. We got this guy unhooked. We're gonna put him on the bump board quick. We got 20, 27 and a half inches. You bet. 27 and a half inches, just. A great start to the day here. Oh, what an awesome fish. Oh, sweet fish. Um, but really quick, talk about the rig that I was using. This is one of my all time favorite walleye rigs that I've been using over the last few years. Um, and that is a drop shot. I've tried some single hooks. I do like these VMC spin shot hooks. Um, I like how they spin around. I like how they always stay horizontal. And that is again, just with a, a drop shot weight like that. I can't even remember the size of that one is a quarter maybe. And this is on my six foot medium light Rosemore outdoor gear. Uh, this one is the whiskey flats. And this is my absolute favorite drop shotting rod. This is my favorite kind of finesse walleye rod. And that is with the Carbon X 1000. Typically I run Carbon X 2000s on all my walleye gear, but for this more finesse, this light setup, this six foot medium light with the Carbon X 1000 is just an awesome setup. You can feel everything. You can make these short pitches out and about depending on where these fish are and kind of just sharp shoot them with the drop shot here. So we're gonna keep kind of rolling around, see if we see any more fish on kind of this area that has some of that uh, rock mixed in and we'll see if we can pull a few more out of here. But that is an awesome start to the day. If we could start every day like that, my life would be a lot easier as the guide. I'll tell you that much. There's the school. Out in front at about 75. There's a little drop shot and crawler. 50 feet. 
Not sure if that made it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yep, there it is. Does not feel big. My guess is little walleye. When you see them schooled up so much like that, that's what they tend to be. We'll just grab this guy. We got him kind of lassoed. It's an eater sized fish. That's a little more like it. One cast, one fish, just like it should be. In a perfect world. We'll see if those fish are still there. Yeah, they're still there. Sometimes they spook. 45 feet. Gotta be close. Oop, there's one. Doesn't have it great though. Come on. There we go. Not a big one. Little boat flipper. Again, good in that eater size. Big group up there though. Let's see if we can pull more than one out of this group. There we go. Another in that eater size. I'm gonna show you quickly um, some side imaging shots of what I'm seeing on my side imaging when I'm working over these groups of fish, kind of some of the spots that are holding a few more fish. You can see there's definitely some rocks mixed in. You can't see the weeds quite as well, but on the live scope and some of the other areas, you are seeing some of these emerging weeds poking up through those rocks. And anytime you have all of that structure down there, um, those fish just seem to congregate, especially those bigger schools of those eater size walleyes. So we're gonna keep looking for some of that, uh, maybe work some weed edge stuff, but a lot of times what we're looking at right now is just these first break lines. That's kind of your classic um, early summer pattern, these break lines, these weed edges, as these weeds are starting to show up and grow Row, then we are getting a little more of those fish schooled up in and around those areas. Oh, there's one that bit. Still there, yep. You bet. Let's see what we got. Looking to be another maybe eater size. Yep. Awesome. Geez, that guy choked it pretty good. None of these have been too big, but another 15 inch right there. We will take those for my clients getting a little fish fry. Switch her up to a slip bobber leech real quick. There they are, about 55 feet. They're about 14 feet down, so I should be about right. Cast up a little bit beyond them. Let it slip right back to on top of them. Oh, there it's down. Swimming sideways with it. There we go. Slip bobber and a leech. Little bit better. Jeez, he is feisty. You bet. Little bit better fish. There we go. Another great eater. And I think that'll do it for this spot. 55 feet that way. I think the bobber's down. Yep, I couldn't quite see because it was so wavy. Feels like a decent fish too. Nothing crazy big, but I think it's gonna be a solid one. You bet. Oh yeah, whoa, getting squirrely on me. Come on, come on. Oh yeah, it's a beauty. <laughs> there we go actually lost this one in the waves. It was kind of bumpy, a little bit better one. Um, still net eater size variety though. 50, 55 feet out. At least some people stay off these fish. Oh, there it pops down. There it popped down. You bet. I was able to kind of stay off these. These are about 50, 55 feet out. You bet. Man, it's so fun just seeing these fish on the live scope and pitching to them. There we go. Another solid fish. That one's on the slip bobber again. Get this one on the good camera. There we go. Another quality fish right there. Right around that 17, 18 inch mark. Sweet. That one was on the slip bobber. On the slip bobber, we have a little short shank jig, fill wobble bobber, and then we have a seven foot medium Rosemore Outdoor Gear. Um, this one is nice to have a little more length, a little more backbone on the hook set. That is with the Carbon X 
2000. Sometimes I do like to run a 3000 size reel on my slip bobbers just so it can kind of get rid of some of that slack in the line a little quicker, got a little bigger, bigger spool. Um, so I have been experimenting with that a little bit and that has worked fairly well. Uh, so I might be switching a few more of those over to the 3000 size, especially on this little bigger setup like this because you want to get rid of some of that extra slack. So overall, finally found a group that was a little bit more active. Um, but hopefully we can continue to find more groups like that. That one, again, it was a very similar thing. I'm just kind of working these shorelines, driving, waiting till I can see some of these rocky and weedy areas. If I see some rocks and some emerging weed growth combined, uh, that seems to be holding the best fish right now. And I'm seeing anywhere from about 10 to 15 feet is what I'm seeing right now um, on most of these fish. I've seen a few fish out in that 17-ish range, um, but the vast majority have been that 10 to 15 foot on that first break line and they're just kind of cruising these break lines in their pods so they have these pods of fish and they're just moving up and down these break lines and anytime there's like i said something to hold them whether it's rocks or weeds or whatever it might be that is where we're finding the most fish so we're going to keep on at it here and get a few more in the boat Oop, there the bobber goes down there's down yep drifted right over top of them Another good group of fish though, man. Sweet. Whoop. Maybe a little big to boat flip, but we'll take her. There we go. Thought we were kind of done with this weed edge, but sure enough, kept cruising through. And another one on the slip bobber. Casting it a little bit left of them because that wind's gonna kind of push it back into them with this light drop shot like this. Otherwise, if I would cast it right at them, about the time it actually got to them would be past them. Oh. You bet. I'm not sure what we got here. Kind of took it and ran with it. It was kind of a goofy bite. Feels decent though. Looks like a good walleye. Ooh, stay out of my live scope transducer here. Oh yeah, that's a beauty. Oh, feisty bugger. That's a beauty. See where we're at? You bet. Another, this one's a little more chunky. A little bit longer, probably in that 18, 19 inch range. Oh no. Never mind, I was way off. We're at 20 and a half inches right there. Sweet fish. We will take those all day long here. Kyle's just frustrating having all that dead zone. There we go. Man, had to follow it all the way back to the boat. Got one following it too. They've all been good fish though. Another good quality fish. These ones have been so light bitey. Yep. Decent, whatever it is. Oh, it's gonna be a good walleye or a smallie, I think. Be a good walleye. Come on, stand down, okay? Stand down, okay? Oh yeah, that's a good walleye. Another good walleye. Oh, put that one on the bump board. We got her at 25. There we go, 25 incher. Another beauty right there. We've had some just quality fish. Let that one go. Sweet. Well, we are gonna call that a wrap on the day. A fun morning out here. Some pretty good action at times. Had to kind of sift through a few at times. Saw a lot of groups of fish. Uh, a little bit different than the last video. The last video I started doing some more of that underwater structure, some of those points, some of those rocky points that are sticking out. Today I was focusing mostly on some shoreline breaks. Shoreline breaks working some of those weed edges. As you can see there's just schools of fish kind of along this whole edges. Uh, you see that break line, you see a school of fish here, school of fish here. 
Um, and being able to utilize your electronics like this and really maximize your time around that school of fish as opposed to say, trolling around them and kind of working through one group of fish, maybe catching a fish or two as you work through it, being able to capitalize on those groups of fish and get your bait around them as much as possible is huge right now. I'm trying to turn, block the wind a little bit. As always, I appreciate you watching. I did want to mention one thing. I had a few questions on my last video uh, about the live scope setup. Um, I have a video for running through the whole thing, but it is by Arc Lab. The swivel is by Larmac 360. So I have links for those in my description below if you're curious. On my live scope setup, um, that is there. Hoping to sneak out a few more videos like this throughout the summer when I have days off. Um, trying to be more intentional about that because it's so fun seeing some of these fish on the electronics and being able to put some patterns together um, and hopefully help you guys out along the way. Like I said, got my live scope transducer. It's actually shipped out today, so hopefully getting a little better clip picture on that live scope here shortly. Once more, thanks for watching. Appreciate the support, and we'll see you next time.